Hello everyone. It's the 17th Sunday after Pentecost at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Stewart, Minnesota. Almighty and merciful Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, has taught us that what we do for those in need, we also do for him. As he became the servant of all, help us to be a servant to others. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the prophet Jonah, chapter 3, beginning at the 10th verse. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head, to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush, but 
When dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, Yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush, for which you did not labor, and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night, and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than a hundred and twenty thousand persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals? Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the first chapter beginning at verse 21. St. Paul writes, For to me living is Christ, and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation, and this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Our Gospel reading comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, the 20th chapter beginning at verse 1. Jesus taught, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, and about three o'clock he did the same, and about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came and each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, 
they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Grace and peace to you in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus taught, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. That's how today's lesson begins. So let's think about how the kingdom of heaven for us is like being day laborers in Jesus' vineyard. We pray in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Praying like that is as though we were day laborers gone out to the village square looking for work in order to earn our daily bread. Jesus is like a landowner who comes and finds us and hires us to work in his vineyard. Thus, you might say that this parable Jesus told in today's lesson illustrates that petition of the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. When you consider what comes before this in Matthew, in the latter half of Matthew chapter 19, it concerns Jesus' teachings on riches and people's love for money, on making it through the eye of a needle. We followers of Jesus are pointed towards thinking of ourselves as though we ought to be more like lowly day laborers. On the other hand, it's good to recall a different parable Jesus told concerning vineyard workers who think themselves entitled to the vineyard they're working in. Those vineyard workers feel so entitled that they actually scheme to kill the son of the vineyard's owner. But we mustn't think of ourselves somehow entitled to Christ's vineyard in some way. Rather, we just need the attitude of feeling blessed each day to receive a living wage for labor we're blessed to be able to provide for Jesus' kingdom. Heaven for us is a matter of being able to work daily in Jesus' kingdom, of actually making some kind of contribution towards the harvest of Jesus' vineyard. The thing about day laborers is that all they want is to work that day. They're desperate to earn a day's wages. Without those wages, they and their families can't survive. So each day, they're totally focused on the work that they get hired for. Thus, if we're talking about the kingdom of heaven, and if those laborers were us, we'd be focused on just working for Jesus, and that'd be heaven for us. It's when we step back 
from just being the human workers that we were created to be that the trouble starts. It started for the workers in Jesus' parable when they started comparing themselves. They thought it didn't seem right that they all got the same wages for having performed different amounts of work. Imagine what the desert around Israel was like. It's very dry there. If you look over the barren hills with hardly anything growing, it looks like total wilderness. But the truth is, with much effort and cleverness, it is possible to create vineyards here and there in such a desert. But we have abundant rainfall here in Minnesota, maybe not so much this year, but over in Israel, you need great effort and planning to create a vineyard in such a dry climate. There is much, much less rain than we're used to in Minnesota. In fact, using the topography of the land, the hills and gullies, there are ways to actually create vineyards that rely just on dewfall for most of their water needs. And you can find such vineyards around Israel. They figured out how to create such vineyards already centuries before the time of Jesus. So, when Jesus tells this parable about a vineyard, we'd do well to imagine a vineyard in Israel over 2,000 years ago. Don't imagine a field of cultivated grape plants around here or in Europe. Rather, imagine desolate wilderness around an amazingly contrived vineyard. Imagine how wonderful such a vineyard would appear to a person who had no money or property in Jesus' day in Israel. In other words, a day laborer. Such a vineyard would really seem like paradise to them. That's what the word paradise meant originally. A garden in the midst of total wilderness. It would be like entering an oasis surrounded by desert. The workers Jesus described in the parable have been hired to work in paradise for that day. Imagine being able to just enter the vineyard. One leaves the desolate wilderness behind when one enters the vineyard and works amidst growing green plants, even in shade some of the time, compared to having to scratch for a meager livelihood in the harsh, hot wilderness. Imagine what a paradise it would be to work in a lush, healthy vineyard. So, Jesus is saying that we should have the attitude of a day laborer rejoicing just to be able to work in paradise instead of spending a day uselessly out in the hot wilderness starving to death. We should just be happy to work. And it's not just any work, it's work in paradise. So, Jesus wants to employ us. He's asking us to work in his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. We're day laborers and he wants to hire us. Jesus begins, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. This is about working in and experiencing 
Jesus's kingdom in this world. Working for Jesus actually is like a chance to step into paradise, out of the wilderness of this sinful world. Instead of spending time fretting over our future, we can just joyfully get to work in paradise each day. And we can furthermore look forward to all eternity like this. Jesus' kingdom is eternal. This is about where we'll spend eternity. But Jesus' parable tells us that here and now, when we work for him in the kingdom of heaven, we're no longer in our natural fallen state. As descendants of Adam, we've fallen into sin. We can't help but compare the wages we receive. Even so, Jesus tells us in the parable that we don't have to live in that sinful state. We must forget about comparing ourselves and our wages. We can instead just rejoice in the work. Jesus, our master, the landowner, has given us to do. Even if our world is a wilderness of sin, totally given over to sinfulness, we can still step out of that wilderness of sin to work in Christ's vineyard. When we do that, all the sinful comparing and envy must stop. All the worldly cares about possessions, status, and power must stay behind. When we do that, we're beginning to experience heaven. We're beginning to get a taste of what eternal life with God in heaven is like. In heaven, all we'll want to do is use our bodies and minds for the sake of God. We don't want to grow more prosperous. We don't want to get wealthy. We don't want to lie around sipping lemonade. We want to work for Jesus. We want to get up each day ready and able to work hard for another day. And that's forever. We rejoice in the bodies and the abilities and skills we've been given. So we must set aside sinfulness as we work in Christ's kingdom. We don't have to stay out in the hot wilderness of sin. There is a paradise out of the hot sun, out of the wilderness. It's a garden oasis. And no matter where we are in the wilderness of sin of this world, we can still work in Jesus's vineyard. It's as though Jesus is out recruiting us as day laborers for his vineyard day by day. Every day Jesus comes to recruit us for work in his vineyard, and our response should be joy. Joy to just work and work. That's what we were created for. Working for Jesus, we can experience the natural state that Adam and Eve were created for. The state of working in God's garden. It's not like the words of the curse Adam received in Genesis 3. Instead of thorns and thistles, there's a beautiful, well-tended vineyard that we would have never been able to design a vineyard of healthy grapevines. Instead of the toil and trouble and frustration of this sinful world, Jesus is telling us that his vineyard is like paradise to work in. Don't be fooled by the toil and troubles of the world around us. In the midst of this wilderness of human sinfulness, Jesus has established and is building up a vineyard that is like paradise, 
a garden into which he's inviting us to work each day. Each day Jesus comes to us, just as in the parable, seeking workers to work in his vineyard. Each day, each of us gets hired to serve him. It may indeed be work, real effort, but it's a joy to work in Jesus' kingdom. Out in the wilderness of this world, we're still under the curse of human sinfulness. But in Jesus' kingdom, serving him is a joy, and his kingdom is eternal. Jesus says, repent, the kingdom of heaven has come near. So we repent each day in order to enter his kingdom. We hear his invitation to enter his vineyard, and we enter and work. We really are like day laborers, and we pray, give us this day our daily bread. This involves paying attention to what it is that Jesus wants us to do for him that day. We must also learn to hear Jesus' voice speaking to us. May we all experience paradise today and always. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
as disciples of Christ Jesus, called to love and serve all people, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and for all of God's creation. Lord Jesus, thank you for freeing us from the power of death and giving us eternal life. Without you, we'd be imprisoned in death. Help us to experience your kingdom now and to joyfully serve you in your kingdom each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we remember Jesus' kingdom. It is miraculous. Though it's not visible to the eyes of this world, help us to see and take part in Jesus' kingdom, especially help us to not be envious of fellow workers in your kingdom and to forgive as we've been forgiven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, help us to walk with Jesus and to trust in him. Help us to turn to him in every need. Grow our faith, hope, and love, and help us to make real efforts for Jesus' kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, through our baptism, we have entered your kingdom and become part of your service to this world. Help us to walk at your side until the end, when we shall see your fabulous kingdom in all its shining glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, please look after all Christians suffering persecution for their faith. We remember Christians in, in places like Nigeria and Libya strengthen and encourage them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we remember the harvest and all workers out in the fields. We pray for their safety. Be with all of them, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Visit and comfort the sick and suffering too, dear Lord. Heal and strengthen weak bodies, calm and correct confused minds. We pray for those we know with particular needs, including Nissi Langenbau, Larry Meyer, Kristen Dur, Alton Lean, Bill Richer, Barb Mathwig, Chuck Kalenberg, Keith Richer, Caius Crone, Sam Schumann, Sarah Kelly, Josh Abshire, Steve Sangren, and Donna Feigum, and others now we name silently before you. Support them all with your great love and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we present these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord who is risen from the dead and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.